You spoke with Connor McDavid on Wednesday. How has he been preparing and using the time here between series to get ready? It's funny, Glenn. It's kind of like this combination of decompressing, but also preparing for the biggest moment of your life, right? That's the situation that McDavid and these players are in right now. It's been a grind to this point through three rounds of the playoffs. They've been through a lot, so it's about getting your rest. McDavid talked about just trying to turn your mind off a little bit, whether it's walking the dog or just trying to do things to feel normal. So there's that, but then there's also bracing for what's about to come. And, you know, Matthias Ekholm talked to this group about how the year he was in the Stanley Cup final by the time they actually got to game one after all the media and all the craziness, he felt like his team almost forgot like there was hockey to be played. And that's his message to this group. So for McDavid and some of these Oilers going through this for the first time, it's decompressing, but it's preparing. Yeah, and this was also the first day we saw them on the ice since they beat Dallas. And you talked earlier in the week, Ryan, about hey, they might need to make some changes before facing Florida. So was there anything you saw on Wednesday on the ice that indicated something might change with the lineup for the start of the Stanley Cup final? Yeah, one potential line change, and I really like this. So you'll recall, Glenn, when they beat Dallas, it was Corey Perry and Ryan McLeod on a line with Leon Dreisaitl. They put that line together. Uh, and it worked late in that series. I don't think that was the right formula, though, for the Florida Panthers. We expect it to be more physical, a more robust team that will come at him in a different way. So what it looks like he's going to do is have Dylan Holloway and Evander Kane on Leon Dreisaitl's wings. This line has played together in these playoffs at times during the year here and there. I really like this. All three skate well. All three are hard to play against. All three are big bodies. Yeah, I think this has a chance to be a difference-making line in this series just for all the reasons I just mentioned. So there was that change. I think it's a good one. The other one I, you take note of is it looks like Philip Broberg is going to remain in the lineup for game one. I thought maybe they would consider Vinny D'Arnais, who's a, a great penalty killer and bit bigger, more robust player. But it looks like Broberg has earned some trust here. And, and at least from practice today, we'll get the start in game one. Yeah, we've also heard a lot these past few days about the difference Chris Knobloch has made since he was brought in behind the bench. But is it fair to say, Ryan, that maybe lost in all this is his bench boss or sorry, his boss, Ken Holland? He's made a mark <laughs> as well here. Yeah, I, I think so, Glenn. I mean, an, an Oiler fan doesn't love this. Like, Ken Holland gets piled on quite a bit in this market, you know, for whatever reason. Here they are in the Stanley Cup final. So I, I wonder how the average Oiler fan is feeling about Ken Holland's tenure here, which he's at the end of his contract heading into this offseason, as we know. And it all hasn't been perfect, right? There have been moves that have worked and moves that have not worked. But I'm going to point to two here for you, Glenn. And you tell me what you think. Zach Hyman at $5 million for what he has added to this team, that's franchise changing when you add a player like that at that dollar figure with everything he's been able to do. And then remember all the pressure they were under at last year's trade deadline to fix the blue line? How good has Matias Ekholm been with this team? He has been off the charts. The perfect addition. And, Glenn, you tell me, are the Edmonton Oilers in the Stanley Cup final right now if either of those two players aren't on this team? I don't think so. No, definitely not. And you mentioned Hyman. That's got to be the best value contract in all of hockey. And, yeah, Ekholm has been an absolute stud. Uh, Holland's taken a lot of criticism over his five years in Edmonton, but he can also become the ninth individual to win at least four Stanley Cups as a general manager of an NHL team. Thanks, Ryan.